All right, let's see, boys. Let's see if this was fucking worth it. Bounty Hunter is back, baby. Um, while we're rampaging our uh, support for PvP content in recent years, we will still regularly see feedback that is really hard for fresh faces to dip their toes into old school's risk it old PvP gameplay. That's why we've designed the new and improved Bounty Hunter mini game as the perfect jumping uh, off point with nothing but fun, fast paced honor PvP. By introducing fresh blood into the PvP ecosystem, we hope to bolster activity across the board, be it mini games, DMM, or the wilderness. So come on, keep reading to find out how you can get started with Bounty Hunter and get ready for a summer PvP fun. To access Bounty Hunter, you'll also need to be on a Bounty Hunter world at launch. These worlds are 318 and 319. Yes, there are former target worlds, but we are set sunsetting for now. But don't worry, for Emblem Trader, the Revenant Caves is still hanging around to accept your ancient artifacts. Once you're through the portal, you'll find yourself in a lobby area, a weirdly charming fort in the center of Demon's Crater. You'll be spending a lot of time here, so don't forget to familiarize yourself with the am amenities provided. In the middle, the same portal that brought you to Bounty Hunter will teleport you back to Froak's Enclave Paths, and the north, east, south, west of the portal lead to the exit barriers, which will t take you to the minigame itself. Make sure you're ready for a fight before interacting with these. Around the outside of the lobby, you'll find two bank chests, two pools of refreshments, a call for a loot chest, and a pull booth that should cover everything you might need bouts of the carnage. You'll also find the corrupted warriors. Despite the gnarly dragon armor, they're actually super chill, and will teach you everything you want to know about Bounty Hunter, including the rules of combat, a list of the corrupted ancient warrior gear you've purchased, on how you can get your hands on these iconic bounty hunter hats yes the hats are back just so you know the kill count required to unlock them will be made of any pre-existing bounty hunter kills you've racked up add it to any kills to secure the iteration for example if you had a thousand target kills already you'll need another 1.5k target kills to unlock the bounty hunter hat tier 6. depending on your combat level you'll have to put a minimum deposit which is uh lost on death if you're unsculled skull players will lose a token 10k gp from the coffer on death so make sure you throw a few pennies and before getting started we've received some feedback that the numbers are likely too low so let us know your thoughts and we'll remain open to adjusting adjusting them as necessary no teleporting although you could teleport target spell from the inside of the lobby not the crater itself you already have a target assigned no protection prayers no binding spell effects including the free spell ice spell no teleblocking these restrictions ensure that honor pvp remains the heart of bounty hunter that said, we'll keep a close eye on how these rules play out in practice, especially the ones to no teleporting. We're already aware of the request for no on, uh, no on our crater, but it's not something we plan on to introduce at launch. There are also some rules designed to make Bounty Hunter more welcoming to the new PvP enthusiasts. Combat XP is blocked, but you'll receive fake XP drops so that you're able to figure out when's a good time to prepare a ferocious granite mall combo. To limit rushing, any players who initiate combat will be blocked from leaving the crater for 30 seconds, although their target will be allowed to leave. Okay. Any untradeables such as staples like Void Knight Armor, the Ventic Defender, or an Infernal Cape will revert to a broken state on death. If not protected, requiring them to repair them at Purdue, dropping the same repair value to whoever brought you down. PJ timer restrictions mirror those PvP worlds. The only exception is that your target will also take priority. So if you're engaging in rogue activity and attack someone who isn't your target, your actual target will be able to interrupt at any point. The default matchmaking range is set to within five combat levels of the player. Although you could increase this to 10 or 15 levels by speaking to the emblem trader in the lobby, rogue players, more on this moment, will be able to attack players within five combat stats of their own. Upon passing through the exit burials, you'll spawn in at the one designated spooky markers around the area the default matchmaking range is set to within five combat levels although you can increase this to 10 or 15 by speaking to the album trader in the lobby i'm gonna do this to 15 levels on the main right upon passing through the exit burials you'll spawn at one of the designated spooky markers around the area then be assigned appropriate target whose name's combat level in rough distance from you will appear at the ui if you get a look at your target and decide they are a bit too scary for you you could skip your target and in a using the green fast forward button next to your name leaving the crater for two minutes or logging out will skip your target if you need to leave the crater to restock your supplies and re-enter before the two minute timer is up you'll get a little extra time to compensate skipping three targets within 30 minutes will get you a penalty this 30 minute window starts when you first skip a target and the penalty is followed maybe you're reading this and thinking that matchmaking isn't for you perhaps you'd rather be a menace you're, uh, you're in luck as with previous iterations of Bounty Hunter, you'll be, you'll be able to grow rogue, throw the rules out the window, and attack anyone within the five combat levels of your own. Whether they are a target or not, rogue kills will uh, reward you with anything your target wasn't protecting, the PvP standard. 
as well as GP in the coffer that you're eligible for, but you won't receive emblem upgrades of BH points. I'm not going to kill anybody that's not my target. It would be a waste of time, you know? Exit the crater by clicking one of the four lobby entrances at center. This uh, lets you quickly top up your supplies and have a little splash in the pool before getting back into the action. The reward system in Bounty Hunter is simple. Kill your target, earn two Bounty Hunter points. On top of this, there are extra points for grabs at various kill mi milestones, similar to Slayer Task. Wow. There are ways for players to earn extra points if they can rack up a substantial kill streak without dying. Players can hold one emblem at a time, either in their inventory or bank. Uh, as with the previous iterations of the mini game, your emblem will level up with each successful target up to the maximum of tier 10. Be careful though, if you die while holding your emblem, you'll have to obtain another one and start over. The system ultimately aims to reward players for securing kill streaks while also preventing more obscurious players of transferring their prevailed emblems to their mates. Should you lose your emblem for whatever reason, you can buy a fresh one with the emblem trader for two points just in case you'd like to start leveling it without wasting a new kill. Any particularly brave iron players among you that have to purchase tier 1 emblems from the shop since you won't be able to obtain a fresh emblem from the kills, though you'll able to level them up just like everyone else, now you've got some points you could spend on the prizes. So you can see all the prizes right here. One, one thing, we have to check the most important thing right now. F, uh, control F and search up Trident. Oh yes. Oh, foof, foof, foof. You know, gotta make sure he's not one of the J-Mods. Gotta make sure they're, they're hella firing that man, you know?